Hello, readers. Welcome to 20 Questions with Your Favorite Author, where we ask authors important questions like why would you agree to be on this podcast? I'm Kelly Lynn Colby, Editorial Director at Chris Dragonship Publishing. Our guest this week is Alex Rath, best-selling science fiction and post-apocalyptic author. With works published in the Four Horsemen universe, This Fallen World, and the Salvage Title universe, Alex has now spread out with his own colonization science fiction with the Terran Space Project, starting with Seeds of Terra. He resides in South Carolina with his wife and elite gymnast daughter. If he's not your favorite now, he will be after. Welcome, Alex. Thank you so much for being on tonight. Thank you very much. Nice. I hope you studied. <laughs> we have very, very difficult questions we ask. Well, uh, I'll do my best. I'll, I'll put it that way. Sounds great. All right. First... A very literary question. My very first one is, an elite gymnast daughter? I mean, how do you have time to even write books, let alone do anything else? <laughs> um, I, I get up early. <laughs> <laughs> it's very helpful and takes her out of the house every now and then for me so I can write. Well, and all the road trips to all the competitions. I mean, holy moly. Uh, there's that too. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't too bad because we only had the max drive was about four hours. Uh, oh, that's not too bad. Uh, well, then we have, um, let's see, we have AAU regionals in Tennessee and AAU nationals in Orlando. Ooh, Orlando is my favorite. We'll probably be uh, at least one competition in Vegas. I mean, it, it, she's moving up a level or two next year, so it, it's going to get worse. <laughs> Yes, and more expensive. Um, yeah, yeah. I think that's right. So buy his books. He needs to pay for gymnastics. Let me tell you. <laughs> you know, I always said because our daughter also did a very expensive sport with horses, right? So hunter jumper, and I always told my husband, you know what, honey, it's cheaper than bail. Uh, because she... you know, buy my books. I don't have a body for OnlyFans. I that's. <laughs> I, look, man, you got to pay for this however you have to pay for this. It's it's just going to happen. Sorry. Only fans is the way to go. Um, <laughs> but, you know. Uh, <laughs> who did, I mean, sometimes people pay for crazy stuff, right? I mean, who knows? Um, I mean, it's everyone. Anything, anything could happen. Um, but Friday did ask, so I want to make sure to get this one out. Friday wants to know, are any of your books like space opera -y? You have any kind of like space opera kind of stuff? Or is it more hard sci-fi? No, none of my stuff is really hard sci-fi. Um, Four Horsemen Universe is military science fiction, very mm -hmm. military. The Fallen World is is post-apocalyptic. It's an assassin kind of thing. Um, Salvage Title, I wouldn't really call it space opera. The closest thing is probably going to be the Terran Space Project series. Mm -hmm because it's more colonization, first contact kind of thing. And it's way more about the story and the character development. Well, all mm -hmm. is very heavy character development, but- Good, we like that. Project series is, is very heavy about the characters and, you know, just what happens with them. So I, it's, it's closest to space opera I have. Mm -hmm. None of them are the length of, you know, I, I don't have David Weber's time or breadth of... of Who does? Yeah. 500,000 word novel, but... Um, In two months? Yeah, no, I'm with you. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. No, we do the best we can, man. We're doing the best we can. Um, Knowing David, David is a good, very good... Friend. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give him a hard time every now and then. Or as often as possible. No, no, that that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Helps when I don't, so... <laughs> well, we've had quite a few uh, Four Horsemen authors on this podcast. What is it about this universe that is so attractive to you? <laughs> um, I actually love telling this story. Four Horsemen Universe, I started writing. Ooh. I, I actually met Chris Kennedy at um, mm -hmm. a convention called HonorCon uh, that some folks may be familiar with. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I was reading the Four Horsemen books and the Golden Horde. They have like the best intelligence IT division, you know, hacking and things like this. Mm -hmm. Having been in IT for 30 years, 
that's something I kind of latched onto. So as mm -hmm. uh, author stories begin, I was at a bar <clears throat> and I, I had this idea smack me in the face. So I pulled out my phone and I messaged Chris and I said, hey, I've got this idea for a Four Horsemen short story. If you'd let me write in the Golden Horde, which, you know, that's his unit. I mean, nobody writes in the actual Four Horsemen, um, except me now. <laughs> but uh, I said, I've got this great idea for a short story. And he's like, well, we're not doing a short story any anthology anytime soon. Why don't you make it a novel? That's how... <laughs> You're like, well, uh, okay then. Pretty much exactly my response was, eh. <laughs> right? You're like, I totally know how to do that, I swear. So I'll tell you what, I'll write it with you. So my nice. Your Shield, co-written with Chris Kennedy, uh, came out just about four years ago. Well, that's not such a bad place to start now, is it? No. Uh, mm -mm. That's how I got my start, Four Horse from the Universe. Uh, I've always been a military, military sci-fi reader. Mm-hmm. I, I never served in the military. Um, I have a lot of people ask me that question, mm -hmm. which is a, a wonderful thing to be asked because they ask it because my military is written so well. Nice. Nice. You're like, I did my research. Best compliments I could ever get. And yes, it's all research. Oh, so much research. Well, plus with people like Chris on board, you know, you also have people you can ask. You know what I mean? So. Chris Kennedy. I got Kevin Eikenberry. I've got... Mm -hmm. Casey Azell. Mm -hmm. I've got military people I can talk to. Mm -hmm. Plus, I live about 10 minutes away from Fort Jackson. It's the Army Military Training Base in South Carolina. So, mm -hmm. two guys. That's right. And if you don't, just walk into a bar. You know, you'll be fine. As they were talking about BarCon, right? So, that's you said. This is how this started was at BarCon. Yeah. BarCon's the best con. I don't care what con you're at. Actually, just at my local bar. Oh, even idea just hit me. And, oh, funny. Um, I messaged Chris and the rest is history. And you call your wife and you're like, um, I'm an author now. She's like, you're a what? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Because Chris's wife was very surprised. I, well. He was. He tells that story a lot too. He, his wife was very surprised. <laughs> Just never for publication. Um, ah, thing I yep the character because I, oh wow I'm a role player. Mm -hmm. Started role playing in D and D in 1979, so I've been doing it a little while. Just a little while. So I and I used to write my own campaigns. I mean, it, so write, writing things down was never something I couldn't do. I just so you'd actually spent decades practicing. You just didn't know where you were heading. Yeah, I uh -huh. what was coming and and where it was going to go, which has been amazing. That's so cool. What well, also makes sense then why your stuff is so character driven. Yes, because you were working on characters. That's where you were comfortable with. That's how you practiced, right? So then, hence, that's what naturally comes out in your writing. Makes total sense to me. Um. So we talked. You talked a little bit that you are an IT professional. I'm wondering what skills from that job do you bring to your fiction? Um, a, a lot of it is the fact that I'm used to dealing with non-technical people. You know, mm. back end of IT. My customers are the business units of the organization. Um, you know, so you're the translator. Yeah, I, I worked for a very large international bank for a while, for about 15 years. I had to work with the frontline business units. So I had to be able to explain to them in layman's terms what I was doing. And that started even way further back. In the mid 90s, I was building most companies' first websites. Wow. 150 plus websites in my first job. <clears throat> and having to explain what a pop email box was. Mm -hmm. Over and over and over again. <laughs> Finally figured out how to explain it. Okay, it's a P.O. box. Imagine you go to the P.O. box. You have your key. You put your key in and turn it and open it, right? That's you putting in your username, password, open. That is your key. <laughs> I love it. And they got it. So I, I started to learn how to put things in regular terms. And That's fantastic. This example I give actually comes from my first book, With Your Shield. Mm -hmm. 
decoding something and, and the Spartan, the main character I write, mm -hmm. is decoding something and you know, I, I'm trying to explain to the reader how complex it is to actually decrypt something that's encrypted when you don't have the hatch. And I came up with, okay, and, and I had him explain it to someone else so the reader gets it that way. You need the idiot line somehow, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, imagine you have a million piece puzzle. It's all white. There are no flat edges. And the box comes with two million pieces. Figure out which one million fit together. That's decryption. That doesn't sound like fun. It's not. <laughs> do it <laughs> that is not, i don't i don't think that's fun no no life is frustrating enough i don't need that um okay so be a hacker i can cross that off my future job list there it's not gonna happen i'm not gonna hack through someone else's code i can't figure it out um so if you had to if you had to write a non-fiction book about something you're an expert at and not it so something else what would it be I wouldn't say I would do a book on writing, but I would probably do a book on how to kind of insert yourself into a character, how to put your brains oh. um, okay. mm -hmm. also relates to the real world and how to understand someone else's situation. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you never judge someone based on a two minute interaction because you don't know they got a call five minutes before that conversation that their dog died. Don't know. Yep. But if you're writing the character, you gotta know. Mm -hmm. So maybe the character is having a rough day and you don't tell the reader yet what's going on until a little bit later and they're like, oh, that's why he was such an asshole. Well, he's being a jerk right now. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. 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 Explain it all. Or something like that. Just how to how to get out of your own head. I like it. Well, they do say that people that read more fiction, they're more empathetic than people who don't. So, and that's why, right? You're learning other people's perspective. You're starting to understand more. Like you said, it's not, he's just born a jerk. It's just, he's having a really bad day right now. Give him a minute. I mean, there are some people who are born jerks, but, but not all of them. So we don't need to judge right away. Okay. Um, if you could see anyone live in concert, alive or dead, who would it be? I told you we ask hard questions. That's really hard ones. The tough one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right now, probably Ice Nine Kills. Ice Nine I have no idea who that is. You're going to have to tell me. Metal Band. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. The last two albums were, every, every song is based on a horror movie. And I've been on a big horror kick lately, so... Yeah, I have some people that might really like them then. What were they called again? Nine Kills. Interesting. Um, so when the writing is slow, like when it's just not coming, it's just, it's like, it's not happening right now. What do you do to get your mojo back? I just walk away. Um, I, I, I actually recently went through a stint of that. I went three months without putting word down. Mm. Now, now, part of that is, and, and this is something else I'm really passionate about, is I suffer from depression, PTSD, and, and, and severe social anxiety. Mm -hmm. If you see me at a convention, I will be off in the corner sitting by myself trying to recover. Yeah, you're like, I need a minute. No, I get that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So sometimes I just have to let it go and wait until it comes back. Um, if I really have got to get it, because I don't write under deadline. I, I write and I turn my books in when they're done. Okay. I, I don't make promises on dates because I know sometimes my brain's just not there and we've been adjusting my medications recently. So mm. uh, it, it just. Mm. Yeah. If it's the wrong balance, it's not happening. Yep. I get that. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm looking at maybe starting some other stuff. I, as I, I, I was telling you before we started, I've got about, Probably eight books on deck right now. Mm. Right. So, you know, I, I may just switch gears, start writing something else. 
something else I'll do is maybe read a little. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I want to stay in the genre I'm writing. Sometimes I want to read something absolutely completely <laughs> away of what I'm writing. Uh, uh-huh. Just pop up a video game. So that, that's my one of my other passions is video games. So I'll just pop in the game and just lose myself in that for a little bit. Hey, some of those video games are really good storytellers. Yes. So it, it can be really fun to pop there and then find your passion again. That I understand. No, I mean, typically I'll go to something like Room World where I write my own story. Oh, nice. Nice. Nope. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's very sweet. Um, the, uh, um, in your, so we talked a little bit about your Terran space project series. And in that series, humans finally set out to settle another solar system. Um, so I'm wondering if you were on this trip and not counting like obvious survival things, like the things you have to bring with you, you know, food, clothing, blah, 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 boring stuff. What one item would you take with you? Mm, outside of boring stuff, man, that's tough. Because I know, not the boring stuff. In my brain, everything I think about, well, okay, this requires a power supply, so this then my mind goes down, back down the chain. Um, I, honestly, it, it, in my in my current mental state, it would be this. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I need it, man. This is going to keep me sane. You, you think it's going to be stressful as colonizing a new world? Come on, man. It's going to be easy. No problems. No stress at all. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> or any book. <laughs> if I think it's going to be just fine. <laughs> this is. <laughs> I love it. Um, now your dog. I'm telling you, man, you have too many family members who love you. Um, <laughs> thinking of travel, what location on earth do you still need to see? Oh God. I mean, the furthest I've been outside the U S is Toronto for business. Um, God, I really want to go to Ireland. Ooh, that sounds fun. Up in, in the hills and just away from everything and just be. To see the green for miles. Got to go in the right season. Mm-hmm. I like it. Oh, you know what Spike Cat wants to know? Because she, like, um, graduated high school in South Carolina. She's wondering what part of South Carolina are you in? Uh, currently, I'm in Columbia. Um, but I also spent time in Simpsonville, where it's right outside of Greenville. Gotcha. No, we're from right. Actually, I was born in Charleston, South Carolina. And mom graduated in Somerville. So we were all on the coast. Really sorry. No, hey man, I love Charleston. It was it, it, you talk military, right? It was military. The the big Navy base was there in Charleston, so that's why we were there. And we actually lived right across from the Air Force base. Navy housing was right across from the Air Force base. Oh, I was born on an Air Force base. So. Were you? Oh, see, there you go. There you go. Um, so of all your characters, which one do you relate to the most? Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Ooh, in which world? Which world? He's in the fallen world. Uh, the, the name of the book is Call Me Mr. Smith. Interesting. Wait, you relate the most to an assassin? Should I be worried right now? I'm just curious. Well, you're okay. Okay, all right, all right, all right. It's his mentality. Um, he He's an assassin, yes, but he's the kind of assassin you really want to be friends with because... In, at the stage where the books take place, the corporation that used to contract him um, is gone. So he's a, a free agent now. Ooh. So, you know, he goes into into this, into it's outside of Toronto. That's really no big secret because the cover is the CN Tower uh, and an explosion. But, you know, these things happen. <laughs> you know, they just happen. It's part of the thing. You want. <laughs> But, you know, he, he sees people not being treated well and he takes care of business. You know, people just trying to survive and there's some bullies out there trying to take control of this, that, and the other. So he takes care of things. Um, you know, he, he stands up for the people that can't stand up for themselves. Nice. 
Well, that's a pretty awesome character to relate to. He's a character I really like. Mm-hmm. Again, might make more money as an assassin than a writer. You know, just putting it out there. You'll see more of the world, too. Yeah, probably so. I mean, this could totally work. <laughs> <laughs> I file it. <laughs> well, you know we do. We're writers. All the stuff we research, it's it's kind of part of that's part of the gig for sure. Just look at our bike accounts. Oh, it's another writer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I never thought of that. That's, oh no, they're up to nefarious bank account. No, it's just a writer. Darn it. All right, next. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Okay, I love that. That's funny. Um, what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? Chocolate. Ooh, that was quick. Nice. I love it. Can zombies climb? Depends on the world. I might have to get rid of that question. Sorry, Og. It's like Og's question, but I mean, there's too many depends. We writers think about things too much, right? So it's hard for us to give a yes or no for that one. Versus that character. Whoever the author wants to win. We were playing a uh, Jackbox games yesterday with a you know a bunch of other writers. We were streaming it um, yesterday, just having a ball playing Jackbox games. And I was like, "This is where everyone finds out my characters are smarter than I am because I have time to figure out what they're going to say." Right? Where right now I have to do it really quick. Okay, hold on. My I'm telling you, my characters are smarter than I am. Hold on, I'll do the best I can. Yeah. <laughs> um, surf or turf? Surf. Surf. You take seafood over over steak? Yep. Yep. Good, good call. Me too. Um, which regeneration is your doctor? Nine. Nine. Ooh, interesting. Chris Eccleson. I like that. You don't get that one very often. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Just for the record, I... Talking about. I well, I picked you right away. Sorry, it's Doctor Who fan. I'm uh, sorry. He's totally stereotyped you. I just knew it. We recognize each other. So <laughs> that's right. It's, it's a thing. That's right. I just knew. That's why I put the question in. Um, the uh, <laughs> it's it's ten for us. So just you know, I don't know. Maybe not for us. Zafo might be eleven sometimes. Ten and le- I, I can deal with ten and eleven. Just. Mm-hmm. Here's the funny part. Look, not a big fan of the shows during 12, but Peter Capaldi is an amazing human being. Holy moly, that man, great guy. The writing. Yeah, that same, same. That's exactly 100%. Yep, not my favorite doctor, but person, Peter Capaldi is amazing. Um, What is Carmen San Diego hiding from? Probably Mr. Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Way to pull it around, man. Way to pull it around. Are you telling me she blew up the the uh, tower in Toronto? Is that what you're telling me? That would spoil things. <laughs> you must read the book to find out. Um, if you were around during dinosaur eras, which one would get you? Notice I didn't say eat you, right? So it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be a T-Rex or something. Like, what would get you? See, that's a weird one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll go with Ankylosaurus. Ooh. I don't know how many people even know what that one is. I think the only reason I know is because I watched a dinosaur show on TLC, and that's why I can't get over it now. Park Evolution. So. It's the games. I'm telling you, you learn from games. The only reason I know armor parts is because of years at EverQuest. <laughs> like Pauldron. Oh yeah, I know what that is. Like, like it's just because of EverQuest. Otherwise, I'd have no idea. Games can teach you things. This is how I got really good at math. I'm convinced. I mean, it doesn't hurt, right? Especially when you're trying to get every point you can. It's back during the Thaco days. So. Mm-hmm. Yes, I agree, Conquest. Conquest Publishing is saying that it's funny that a brontosaur never existed. I know. You know, it does exist, right? It's just not called that anymore. Scientific naming is complicated, okay? It's very complicated. Um, when staying in a hotel, do you unpack? Uh, depends on how long I'm going to be there. Really? So you unpack sometimes? Yep. Uh, really? 
Oh, no. Or I wore a jacket every day, so <laughs> I had to hang it up. Oh, well, yes. Now that we will hang up, like, at Superstars. The only reason I own a winter coat is because of Superstars. And, yes, I hang that up when I'm there. Um, I mean, again, we're in Houston. I mean, you're in Columbia, South Carolina. What do you need at three days, you know, three weeks a year, maybe? So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like my... Uh... Your jacket? Yeah, same. Yeah, that's that's Zafo hung his up, too. Um... I must have missed you at Superstars, by the way. I mean, I knew you were Superstars because that's how I got your contact so that we could get you on here. But I, I don't think I saw you. We'll have to hang out next time. Yeah, I was uh, I was all over the place. Um, I, I was, I think probably at this point, I'm best known for getting the evil eye all night while Chuck Gannon and I were sitting in a corner at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, share, Chuck. You're just being rude. You have to share. Chuck and I met at Con Carolinas. We actually shared a table. Nice. Which I thank John Hardness profusely for. <laughs> and uh, so Chuck and I got to know each other. And That's awesome. During his uh, panel on the workshop day mm -hmm. um, on building planets, he he asked, you know, everybody have a question. And he was writing them down, writing them down. And I was just sitting back quietly, as I do. Mm hmm and Chuck looks at me and says, okay, Alex, I know you've got something. <laughs> Come on, give it to me. Great. Just, you know, call me by name. <laughs> he loves me now. <laughs> They're like, ew, Chuck knows him. Teacher's pet. <laughs> <laughs> I met him from the Terran Space Project because I put a habitable planet in a binary system. I mm. said, a binary system B on a green planet. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to talk later. <laughs> well, he asked. That's his fault. So myself and Chuck and uh, Ben Tyler Smith mm -hmm. sat in a booth one night for about four hours <laughs> going over astrophysics for my world and things like this and just... So cool. He gets going. Uh-huh. You, you cannot stop the man. Um yeah, he's scheduled to come on, so I I don't know. This is going to be interesting. I'm I'm going to have to you know get like the proper questions to. <laughs> Fun. Oh yeah. Um, but according to several other CKP authors I talked to later, I was getting the evil eye the whole time. <laughs> hey, that's Barcon. They just weren't following Barcon rules because at Barcon you can interrupt any conversation. That's the fun part of Barcon. That's what I told him. Just come up and say hi. You know. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. We we spent like an hour on astrophysics for my world, um, and See? it was just random whatever. And well, there there are certain things I can't talk about, but <laughs> but also that was probably just as much fun for Chuck because he probably gets a lot of new writer questions. You know, like how do I submit? How am I supposed to? What if I want this? So to actually get that deep into the physics was probably so much fun for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the big scientist. Mm -hmm. And and he, you know, he said when when I was talking about one of my universes at Con Carolinas, he said I spotted the scientist in you. I knew it was there. <laughs> See, see, just like I knew you were a Doctor Who fan. I mean, you know, some things you can just sense. There are things you can sense. <laughs> okay, what mythical creature would you least like to pet sit? Basilisk. <laughs> you don't want to be turned to stone? I don't understand. What's the problem? I mean, it really would simplify things, you know, just for the record. <laughs> Basilisk. Oh. <laughs> I said, say hello. I didn't say look at him. <laughs> Where do you get all these funny looking gnomes from? Well, you see. <laughs> Oh, uh, don't look at, oh, well, there's another one. We got to put this one over. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's so funny. It's a good answer. Um, well, I had a ball tonight. Thank you so much for being on. So now that you are um, everyone's favorite author, where can fans find you and your work? Uh, yeah, my website, alexrathauthor.com. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, I'm on Facebook under Alex Rath author and mm -hmm. go to Amazon, type in Alex Rath. I'm pretty much the only one there. 
Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. So please, everyone, go out and review Alex's work. You can also review us wherever it is you get your podcast. You can also subscribe on YouTube or follow us on Twitch. And we will see you next week with our very own Ember Holt or J.D. Astra. Or we'll see which name she shall use next week. And so she is next week. So that'll be fun. Thank you, everyone.